Look, I had a big case back in the day. Right. Because someone broke in my house and I defended my home. You know what I'm saying? It ain't that easy. It ain't that simple. And in California, it's even worse. You caught a body? Saying? Yeah. Damn. Yeah. And, and it was you just, just beat it on self-defense right away? Not right away. How long did it take? About eight years. Eight years sitting in jail? No, nah, I, went, I went on the run. Oh. I didn't sit, on, sit in jail. And then how long were you locked up before you went to trial? Oh, no, no, no. So initially it happened. I bond out. Um, and then over time they dropped it without prejudice, meaning they could bring it back. Then I catch another case. I mean, I was I was in the streets, right? right. I never got in trouble for anything. Though. But the situation where this happened wasn't some you being in the street shit. That was like a home invasion? Yeah. Wow. So, so uh, make a long story short, and the guy was like a lifetime criminal. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So anyway, uh, about a year later, an incident happened, right, where somebody tried to jump me drunk. You know what I'm saying? I knocked one out, the other one run. I get in my whip, and the security tried to grab me, open my car door, and I have my strap, and I, it's legal, you know what I'm saying? No prior, I'm like, yo, get the fuck out of here, whatever, you know what I'm saying? He back off, we leave, we just go down the street to another bar, I ain't think nothing of it, it's a fight. And we see fucking ambulance and all over the top shit, and um, the dude just busts his head open, who fell, who I punched. Um, the guys, when they were taking the police part, you know, you, you get the discoveries, read all this shit. And he was like, look, I don't want to press charges. I shouldn't have been bothering him. You know what I'm saying? And the other guy, you don't have the right to open somebody's car door. However, they said, fuck all of that. And they charged me with ag assault, deadly weapon, right? So they were like, oh, we got him now. So they bring back the other charge and that one. Mm. So then they like, they got me. Because on paper, it's, it looks horrible, as bad as it gets. Right. So they rearrest me. It was um, over the top, like I'm fucking El Chapo in the middle of the street, unmarked cars, shotguns. I'm like, this is unnecessary, whatever. So they arrest me. I bond out again for that. It was a lot higher that time. And, um, you know, I had a plan. Like, I'm going to fight it. I'm going to try to fight it. Um, but, you know, me being ignorant of the system, like, I paid my, my, my retainer for my attorney. But I had to fight a, a charge not a charge but they try to they put me in a gang unit right which enhances your anything that happens by 10 years right mm-hmm. so if you did a crime that's a four-year sentence right but you're classified as a gang member it's 14 years now draco the ruler and his brother ralphie they got hit with like uh the the gang mm-hmm. enhancement on stuff like ralphie apparently like used a stolen credit card mm-hmm. to do some purchases at the mall and they said, like, oh, you're part of a gang, even though really the gang that he's part of is like a rap group. Right. And then they use that to try to throw him so away. So this is what they did. So now most people don't even know you could fight that shit, right? Right. First of all, most people tell them that, yeah, I mean, they'd be like, where you from? I'm like, I'm from so-and-so. I'm like, I'm not anything, sir. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, nothing. And I had a crew who's rap shit, whatever. And it's not a gang. So my, I had a, a whole trial for that alone. To they had to prove that I'm in the gang, that I'm a gang leader or whatever. So you had to sit down for a long ass time to go through all nah, this shit. I'm out. Oh, you were out yeah, during yeah. it. Okay. So they couldn't. It's silly. It, it it actually was eye opening because that was my first time in a criminal anything. Right. I had a civil case before, but that was nothing. You're probably spending a ton of money on lawyers. I tell you. So I had like money. In, I had enough money for a fifty thousand dollar attorney back then. Right. Which was a lot for me. But that ain't shit for these big cases. You know what I'm saying? You really want to beat that shit. Right. So at 50 grand, you get a really solid lawyer. But he ain't got no connections. You know what I'm saying? He don't know the tricks. They're not really afraid of him. Right. So we beat that. And I was shocked at the the gang detective knew nothing about gangs or street life. Mm. I was like, how the fuck is he the gang detective? My lawyer beat him up. That he knocked that out the park, right? So I get a call, like, all right, so I need another 15 grand. I'm like, for what? I paid you. I didn't understand a retainer. Mm. Every time he talked to me, he's charging me. Right. That money's getting oh, me. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, shit. So I'm I'm free, but I had an ankle bracelet on. So my business that I was partaking in at the time, I put somebody else in charge to run it back, whatever, whatever, just bring me my, my, my uh, cut. So, bro, all this pressure was on me. Like, I'm nervous, right? Because I'm like, fuck, prison. And I'm, I'm talking to all my homies that's been, like, what is it like? 
like obsessing about it. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So I'm like, fuck, okay. Just getting all this information in my head. I'm dreaming about it. You know what I'm saying? So I'm having to get back active because the, the guy I put is, yeah. the guy I put to run shit, he's not doing it right. Uh-huh. So I had to get back active and then the people I was sending the um product to on the East Coast was was playing me. So tip, typically, like I had a, an address, one address, I had a two, three year run, no problems. All of a sudden, mm, it's just phone books. You know, because you know, sometimes in the FedEx, UPS, them guys know what's up. So they feel something, like, oh, okay. They stick something through the box and pull it out to see what's on it. So if they see, you know what I'm saying, the right thing, they'll kindly take it out, take out the contents, put something heavy in it. And deliver it to the address and they came up you know what i'm mm-hmm. saying so it's never happened to me i know about that happening but all of a sudden it happens i'm like damn so i'm like fuck i gotta need this money so send another package same thing i'm like this motherfucker playing me mm-hmm. so i had to do i had to take some i had to do some shit. i did some really stupid shit. i'll tell you about that later but i needed to like prove a point you know what i'm saying so then i'm like getting like fuck. i'm running out of money you know what i'm saying i'm about to lose my house Lost my girl, like shit is just is collapsing, and then I get arrested again for something stupid. So I had my ankle bracelet on. So they were like, so it was like some misdemeanor shit, but still I ain't supposed to have no police contact. So the bond was like a thousand dollars, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm like, yeah, I post bond, and the judge was like, well, you can post, but I don't know if you're gonna get out. You know what I'm saying? Because you know your situation. So I'm like, I do it anyway. I take my chances. So at this point, I had been arrested before many times, but never, I bond out, I'm out of there. I never even changed clothes, right? So this time, it's taking longer. It take about 10, 12 hours to get out, right? So I'm getting moved through every little part. This is in Arizona, Maricopa County, it's a horseshoe. I don't know if you know, but Maricopa County, Dade County, and LA County are the three worst jails in this country. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like the conditions fucking suck. Right. So the horseshoe, you gotta go all the way around, you see the judge, and after that, you still there? Then they, they move you to, to your crib where you're going to be at. So I keep getting moved. I'm like, I'm getting anxious. And they change me out. I'm like, fuck, I never had this shit on. You know what I'm saying? So now I'm in this little tiny two-man cell before I get housed, right? And it was a dude. I didn't know him, but he knew me through my people. For the street, he was cool. So he's like being cool and shit. I'm like, yo, bro, I can't talk to you right now, bro. Like, stop talking to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, my brain was going into a dark place. You know what I'm saying? And um, I'm like, why the in my head, I'm like, why the fuck is he happy? You know what I'm saying? Like when you see people in jail smiling, you're like, what the fuck is wrong with y'all? <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? So, so I'm like, I'm in the streets, bro, and I'm a person with a heart that's down to do whatever. However, I still had like a clean life growing up. You know what I'm saying? I had morals and you know what I'm saying? I just was in a weird spot at the time, you know what I mean? So my mind went to this. All right, they take me in there. The, anybody that say anything to me, I'm knocking out. For no reason, I don't give a fuck. There's no logic to it. It's the stupidest shit ever, but that's, that's I've reverted to primitive fucking behavior. Right. So I'm sitting there like fucking hot, bro, because I'm thinking like, I'm gonna sit in here until trial, and I'm gonna fight trial, and I'm running out of money, so I'm not gonna have a lawyer after a while. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna see my kids. Because the, the plea was 10 years. I'm like, fuck that. The plea is 10, but the presumptive was 14. You know what I'm saying? If I blew trial. Why are they doing this to a first-time offender? You know what I'm saying? So anyway, man, at the last moment, King, roll up. Oh, now I'm happy. I'm like, hey, bro, stay in touch. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm out of there. So I, I was on pre-trial, right? So pre-trial is where the court give you an ankle bracelet. Right. Not the bail bondsman. So... My pre-trial, like, she's like, kind of like officer. She liked me. She was mad cool. So she was like, she called me, like, that Monday, because it was over the weekend, and said, I need you to come in. I heard what happened. I need you to come in. And I'm like, what's up? She said, I'm not going to arrest you. I just got to give you another bra- bracelet. I'm like, she said, trust me. And I decided to trust her. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm... Look, I've been, like I said, I've done all kind of grimy shit to make money. No, it, things that were outside of the scope of the law to make money. Right. But I never did foul shit to nobody. And I'm, I'm always, always been a man of my word and of character. 
So if somebody give me their word, I believe it. And she said, trust me. So I, said, I trusted her. So I went down there and she didn't arrest me. She gave me another ankle bracelet. Like, man, I don't know what's going to happen. I had court like that Friday or Thursday. I don't know what's going to happen in court. The prosecutor is going to know. So just letting you know. Say less. So I had a contingency plan in place because my plan was to go to trial. And if it wasn't looking good before the last couple of days, I'm out of here. Right. But that got pushed up. For one, I didn't have enough money to fight it without taking some stupid chances and getting caught. And for two, um, I'm not going to sit in jail for trial. You know what I'm saying? Because it's impossible to, to really properly fight your case or get your, your, your affairs in order before you got to sit still. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I said, I'm out of here. So I had this girl from here meet me in AZ. Had all my shit ready to go. Here we go. This car's running. <laughs> Opt in the car. Never looked back. Right. So I was gone for like seven years. You know what I'm saying? And was life tough having to be real secretive and low key? No. You didn't have to be all that low key? No, nah, I was in the beginning because they look for you about for they look for you for about a month. Right. And just they're at your people's cribs and sitting out there and shit like that. Then they go away. And this is what year? Two thousand nine. So it's very early social media. It's not like now where everybody lives Facebook on social media. Time. Yeah, it's Facebook. So I had a Facebook account that I had like a silly name that I made, made right. up just for my family to keep in touch. Mm -hmm. And then Instagram came. Then I was, I had to get a job, like because I wasn't gonna hustle because people when people want to run, they get caught fast. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Because they doing because they crimes. have to do illegal shit, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, and look. I was a criminal, but I was smart. So I researched the fuck out of everything to see what I could do. How could I move? Can I fly or whatever? So, and I was flying. I was doing all kind of shit because- You got a fake ID? Nah, I, no, fuck no. I, in, in, that's that's a 10 year sentence right there. I'm gonna get caught at some point. You know what right. I mean? And my thing is like, try to make a bunch of fucking money. Having a fake ID is a 10 year sentence uh, when you're on the run? No, period. Um, identity theft is a is a, 10 year sentence these days wow yeah okay back then because I, I researched the shit right so anyway so for my what i was charged with manslaughter it's not murder so it don't murder rape and shit with children is the highest mm. so you they're looking for you anywhere right everything else they're not it's just if you do something stupid and get caught or somebody tell right so i, I was able to travel because there's no connection from TSA and cops, right. right? I mean, I was even out the country, bro. You know what I'm saying? That shit was scary at first because I went to Dubai and they scan your eyes. And in jail, they scan your eyes. Right. I was like, fuck. Do you think this would be harder to get away with now? The traveling and stuff? When you go on the airplane, it feels no. like they're going to figure no, it out if no, you're on no. a database. I don't. No? I, don't. I, don't. Wow. I mean, listen, I don't think it's, people should be going on a run. <laughs> right. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But if a person got a little bit of intellect with them, they can... Bro, I could have never got caught, but I was on social media. Mm. By accident, it started blowing up. You know what I'm saying? So you got caught because you started getting views on YouTube? Bro, first of all, I started social media, this family, and then Instagram. I'm like, damn, this shit cool. And I, I was working as a personal trainer. Right. And, and I'm gonna tell you, this was so demeaning, getting paid like three grand a month. When I was used to getting 30, 40 a week, you know what I'm saying? Mm. So, but I did what I had to do. So I'm working as a trainer. So I would put my clients' little progress on my IG and talking about the workout. Cause I whatever I'm into, I'm all in. Mm. And I only do things I really like doing. Right. So people seeing how much I cared about it and the results was fucking sick. And it was helping me get more business, social media. So Every now and then, I put me doing a lift or doing something crazy up there and shit, and people were just loving that shit, and the shit started going viral. And then I started getting like a, a fucking just a fan base of cops, <laughs> <laughs> cops and military dudes. You know right. what I'm saying? And because they they're fucking they like workout shit. If right? I wasn't like the typical black dude that's in crime and doing thug shit would be a cop if he was in a good upbringing, you right. know what I'm saying, or in the military, you know what I'm saying? So, because just like, think about street life and military life, right? It's people that just need somebody to guide them and give them direction, and that's what both sides are going for. And they're really doing the same type of shit, you right. know what I'm saying? Like, military, like, 
Yeah, no different. A motherfucker growing up in the hood is just like a person going through the military. Mm. The stakes is high, high stressful. You, you're dealing with multiple high stress uh, uh, events and elements. You, you're managing yourself and being cool in, in hot situations. You might have to take lives. You see your your friends' lives die. You know what I'm saying? Mm. You a soldier. You feel me? So it's really the same. It's just one's considered legal and one's not. Killing legally, killing illegally. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's really the same, honestly. Doctors and drug dealers, all the same. You're selling drugs. You know what I'm saying? All right, people, we just hit 300,000 subscribers. You know we're trying to hit 400,000 subscribers. So that little red button, tap it, tap in. Appreciate y'all.